To say that schools have changed a lot over the last few hundred years is an understatement of many centuries. If you were to visit a classroom in colonial times, you would develop a newfound appreciation for the education world we live in today. For starters, not every child was given the luxury of going to school. Only the wealthy could afford to do it. In addition to the harsh punishments imposed, schools across the colony shared a unanimous problem, developing a standard for English literature. Originally taught via horn books, students learned the alphabet and a few prayers. But there was no unifying standard to teach and learn English. It was different from colony to colony. It wasn't until 1783 when the solution to the varying English literature problem was finally incorporated. Written by a man named Noah Webster, this book taught five generations of Americans to spell and read. The blueback speller was a forefather to the dictionary we use today. Fusing principles of Christianity and liberty, Webster wanted to spread his book to the 13 colonies to build a sense of national dignity from Great Britain. Noah Webster was the sixth generation of his family to be born in America. A graduate from Yale College, he intended to be a lawyer but could not find employment anywhere. He instead found a job and wealth in being a schoolmaster where he wrote textbooks to be used in classrooms. There, he found inspiration to make all public schools learn the same set of English, hence the birth of the Blueback Speller and eventually the English Dictionary in 1828. In 1793, Webster was recruited by Alexander Hamilton to be an editor for the Federalist Papers. There, he published newspaper articles and political advertisements. In 1798, Webster returned to Connecticut to serve in the state's House of Representatives. In the later years of his life, Webster was very influential in the birth of the Copyright Act of 1831, which set the stage for the copyright laws we have today. Even though he died in 1843, Noah Webster's legendary legacy remains immortal. He provided the foundations of English instruction and learning in classrooms. If it weren't for him, many people would be very illiterate even to this day and age. <laughs>